All right, let's take a look at the first of our two global configuration commands. The first one we're going to look at is the secure boot config command. And the Cisco description of this is to take a snapshot of the router running configuration and securely archive it in persistent storage. Again, flash. You do actually have a second option with this, and that is to restore an already secured boot config, and we'll take a look at that in a little bit. But basically, here's your command from a global configuration, secure boot configuration, and you will get a message, hopefully, that says successfully, configure, successfully secured the config archive. And it'll tell you, you know, the flash location where this is. And we'll see this when we get on our router that you will not actually be able to see this when you do a show flash or try to uh, do a directory to find this file. That's the uh, invisible file structure aspect of this command. So before we get too much into the configuration aspects, I would say of the two commands that comprise the Cisco iOS resilient configuration, the secure boot config, I would use that um, regardless of what you've got for a uh, backing up your configurations simply because it's going to be storing this locally in a um, non-corruptible form on your flash and I, I know a lot of people will have you know a configuration they might save out the running configuration to flash just so they have something in case the uh, configuration gets blown away this this ad adds to that with the benefit that it's uncorruptible so I mean I would I would use this it's even if you have you know Cisco works or ops where some other method of pushing out configurations this is just like a little bit of a safety net and it may somewhere down the line just save you some time especially when you've got you know monkeys in suits screaming at you to get the damn site up this could save you a few minutes which might seem like a few hours with the uh, stress that you're under at that point so that said let's get back into the uh, configuration details Without any parameters, this command takes a snapshot of the router running configuration and securely archives it in persistent stories. All right, we've gotten that. We've been hammered over the head with that. This is the important bit. The configuration archive is hidden and cannot be viewed or removed directly from the command line interface prompt. And we'll see that when we get on the router. Let's take this part to heart here. We recommend that you run this command after the router has been fully configured to reach a steady state of operations and the running configuration is considered complete for a restoration. So, you know, you don't want to issue this command if you're starting, you know, if you're configuring a router from scratch, you don't want to be like host name R1 and then issue this command because all you're going to get in there is the uh, configuration, the running configuration that you have to that point. This is meant as a, you know, um, a restoration configuration, basically treat it that way. And this is kind of neat. It says the... Um, Secure Archive uses a timer creation as its file name. Now again, you won't see this in the flash, but you will be able to see it with the uh, show secure boot set command. And it, it'll show you, you know, it's kind of nice because it tells you how old this secure boot configuration is based on the file name. It, just keep in mind that you're going to want to have either NTP running or have your clock set so that this is uh, not March 1st, 1993 or some Cisco default that it's going to stamp on there because that will throw off your ability to determine how old that config is. Secure boot config verification. This is our verification command. So you issue the show secure boot set and it will give you this output. We can see here that iOS image resilience is not active. That's the secure boot image command. But since we did issue the secure boot config command, we can see the config configuration resilience it shows the version the major version number of that was being used for the configuration when the running configuration was was stored it tells you what what time it was activated at even if it didn't have this you could extrapolate that from the um, file name here you can see from the file name that it was created on uh, November 21st 2009 at uh, 8 18 p.m. and 22 seconds and that's exactly what it says up here it tells you the size of the archive Again, it's showing you that it's in this flash, but if you do a show flash, you are not going to see this um, file. And I've included this because it's kind of interesting. It says the iOS resilience router ID is, and it gives you, you know, letters and numbers. That's actually the, ser the serial number of your router. And we can show that here, that in this case we're using a 2851 with a serial number of XTP blah blah blah. So it incorporates that into the secure boot set. So we've seen how to configure the secure boot config. Let's go ahead and check out how to actually use it. And to use it is actually to restore the configuration. And you can read this bit here. It's kind of interesting. The number of restored copies that can be created is unlimited. So we saw that there was an option for restore on the command line when we're in configuration mode. And here we see 
secure boot config restore and then you just specify a fully qualified path name to restore the configuration to in this case I have restored it to the flashcard and I've named the file my restore when you issue that hopefully you get a configuration successfully restored as you know the file name that you specified now when I show flash I do see a file and that is the my restore file this is what I've taken the invisible file that's stored there via the secure boot config and then I've restored it to flash so now it's a it's a configuration that I can now save from flash to my startup or running config whichever I could also to, to verify this if you type more and then flash colon my restore you'll be able to see what's in this file but this is how you'll be using the um, feature to restore your configuration you can see here that you're gonna need to be able to get into into uh, enable mode and get into have rights to go into config T in order to restore this and keep in mind again you're gonna need to be on the uh, console line you can't do this from a VTY and that'll keep creeping up that is I mean at the end of the day keep that in mind whenever you're planning to use this um, this feature. As I mentioned earlier, the secure boot config does not dynamically update. So when you save your running configuration, it doesn't affect your um, secure boot set at all. So if you want to upgrade, I'm sorry, update your secure boot config, it's um, a two-step process to that. So what you'll do is you go in and you'll go into configuration mode and first you'll issue the no secure boot config and that basically just clears out whatever um, boot configuration boot config file you had uh, currently so you can see here that it's it renders it inactive so it disables it and then go ahead and just issue the secure boot config and it will activate it and you could tell here that there is a difference in these files because remember the timestamp is integrated into the file name so you can see here that this was you know both of these unfortunately were on the same day but you can see this one was at 951 while this one was at um, 818 trying to do my military math on the times here and so then when you do the uh, show secure boot set you will see that it was updated so you want to follow this process when you're going to change your running config and you want to capture those changes in your secure boot config so you could do you know right before when you start your changes you could just issue that and blow it away the no secure boot config do your changes write it and then go ahead on your way out enter the secure boot config command again or you know you can go ahead and do this at the end where you've done all your updates to your running config and then just do this process the two commands right in a row remember once again you need to be in the console mode I mean you have to be accessing this router through the console in order to do this so keep that in mind I've, I've said that about 15 times I'll probably say it about 50 more times that is the big quote-unquote gotcha with this feature set